Hey guys, it's Steph here. So I just want to get on here real quick and show you my amaranth, show you how well it's doing. So I planted it about two months ago in my cutting garden and I also put it in an area of one of my flower beds with some different annuals. So I'm going to give you a little update on that. It has gone crazy. It is one of my most satisfying annuals that I've grown this year. So I thought it would be pretty fun just to kind of make an amaranth bouquet. Just amaranth and that is it. Sometimes single plants in one bouquet is so stunning and I have a lot of it to harvest so I just can't keep on top of it. It's been one of the easier ones to grow. It really is low maintenance. It actually resents more fertilizer. It's handling my clay like soil. This is my first time having a cutting garden and so I haven't added a lot of compost to it so it's just kind of its native soil. I also haven't watered it a ton. So something that's super easy. I've had the busiest summer of all my summers this year and it's been a little bit more challenging than it normally is with our dry dry weather and so amaranth has been awesome. Let's take a look at it. Look at this beauty. I was worried it wasn't gonna get any plumes or flowers, whatever you wanna call it, but they are coming out a little bit later. And the reason why I felt like maybe I wasn't gonna get any is I've been working at my botanical center and they had all sorts of plumes. This just must be a different variety. Um, but look at my cages right there. So those are nearly six to seven feet tall. And this is almost reaching that. <laughs> so it gives you an idea how, of how big this plant is. And it was just this tiny little start about two months ago. Look how gorgeous these are. They are so fun and they started coming out about a week ago. Let's take a look down here. I just wanted to show you how massive their stems are right there. So they are tough plants. And I love the color of the foliage. They were a little bit greener, but now they're starting to turn purple again. And I think it was because I laid off the fertilizing. I just made sure that they weren't super moist. I do think they like to dry out a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my front area where I planted a bunch of annuals and show you those amaranth too. Here is my second flush of amaranth. So this one is one of my bigger ones. It's starting to go nuts right here. Everything I plant right here absolutely loves this spot. So if you watched my, some of my earlier videos, you have known that I planted my black and blue salvia that I overwintered right here. A bunch of zinnias. I kind of want to just give you a little update while I show you this amaranth. So right here, it's obviously a little bit taller because it gets more sunlight, but this one is starting to catch up. So I think it's going to get there. It's just taking a little bit longer because it doesn't get as much sun. And I just can't get over this beautiful combination of these hollyhocks. So this is the Indian mix hollyhock that I grew in the greenhouse this year. Look how beautiful that is with those amaranth. So I had initially put these in here because my little snowball bush right there is trying to grow and get taller, but unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to move this poor little guy because I have big plans for my front yard. I'm gonna create a lot of structure here, a fence, a brick pathway. And so it's still young, I'm gonna have to move it, but isn't this just stunning? It is kind of taken over a little bit, but I'm totally okay with that because I think it's such a stunner to have this entire area of amaranth. But the black and blue salvia that I overwintered, let's take a look at that. Isn't that so gorgeous? The hummingbirds love it, the bees love it, and it's starting to pop out, looking really, really healthy. I really haven't watered this area too much. I haven't fertilized it a ton. I fertilized it maybe once or twice this summer. I did have a few zinnias that died right here and right here, I think just because they were kind of weak to start with. They were kind of a throw in. I wasn't initially gonna do this, but I thought, why not? I had some leftover annuals for my greenhouse. I'll just put them right here and let them fill in. And I couldn't be happier. I've got a deadhead my salvia, but I have a lot of new blooms trying to come out. And then look at this cute pink zinnia. Isn't it so pretty with that black and blue salvia? And then this queen lime blush zinnia. But I gotta show you these white ones right here. This is the Benary Giant White Zinnia. It's an absolutely gorgeous zinnia. Big flowers, really full of petals. And then I like that little yellow zinnia. And then I have to say, this yarrow is one of my favorite flowers in my entire yard. It's been blooming for a very long time. This is the pink amethyst yarrow. It's a little bit of a shorter variety. This yarrow was planted in the dead heat of the summer and it was like only one of mine that I planted at that time that didn't struggle with any transplant shock. It never drooped. So it handles the dry weather, the drought, the heat so well. So it's a great low maintenance, beautiful, forgiving plant. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting a lot of these amaranth, which is kind of hard. I'm having a hard time doing it, but I also want a beautiful bouquet. And then I'll go, whoa, look at the size of that one. Huge. 
Okay, so I definitely chose the brightest time of the day to do this video, but I just did some research. I wasn't sure. This is my first time growing amaranth, but it is a come and cut flower. So now I feel a lot better about cutting it. It's gonna promote more plumes and they really enjoy the benefits of being trimmed quite often. So here we go, let's get this bouquet going. I just wanted to add, so I got a bunch of these cheap vases from my local thrift store. So it's a good way to go buy a bunch of cutting vases if you don't have any. And I also wanted to add that these have a pretty good vase life, seven to 10 days. You wanna cut them when they're starting to open up and you can also let them totally die and harvest the seeds. And I guess you can eat them like quinoa or something like that, but I'm just using it for the vase. I've totally lost my pruners temporarily. So I'm using my kitchen scissors. I'm sure you guys can relate. So I'm just gonna kind of create a long stem here. I'm wondering if I should go down to that next one, but I'm just gonna go to a set of leaves right there. <laughs> grasshopper they're everywhere see ya okay so I am gonna go show you what my bouquet looks like I put it inside I had to let it settle for about three to four hours because it was really floppy at first I put it in some sugar water they plumped up real nice I lied I actually added some other flowers that I have for my cutting garden that just go beautifully with this red amaranth I do have to say I'm not a professional florist I'm kind of new at making bouquets but I do feel like I have a good idea of colors that look pretty together so I'm just gonna keep practicing eventually I'll become a better bouquet maker but for now it's just all experimental or cut a few of my dahlias because I thought this orange dahlia would look so beautiful with that red amaranth. And then I also have my cherry caramel phlox that I've been growing. And then there's some of those white Benary giant zinnias that I showed you earlier. Thanks for stopping by. It's been so much fun to finally harvest some of this amaranth. I wasn't sure when it was finally gonna start producing some of these flowers. And I was feeling a little underwhelmed at first, but now overnight it's become my favorite. So I'm definitely gonna put it in my cutting garden next year. It's just so rewarding after you've worked so hard to finally be able to harvest all of these flowers and see some successes. So even though I have had quite a few failures, but it makes it worth it. It's my first time, it's all a learning experience. Anyways, have a great day gardening and we'll talk to you later, bye.